I want to talk now to Stephen Wolfe, he's a migration expert, former M MEP and director of the Centre for Migration and Economic Prosperity, specifically about what those candidates have said. Stephen, good afternoon, how are you doing? Very well indeed. I just want to talk first about Cleverly, because he says he's going to resurrect the Rwanda scheme if he becomes Prime Minister. Let's just hear from him and then get Stephen's view on this. I'm just going to try and play the, the James Clever. Uh, no, we're having a bit of a problem with that, but he is saying that he wants to resurrect it. When we deal it. with illegal migration, I stand by what I have always said. We need to I have a deterrent. And as leader, as prime minister, I will use my contacts and my reputation with Rwanda to resurrect that incredibly important partnership. Apologies for the technical issues there. We got there in the end with uh, Cleverly anyway. The team behind the scenes are doing a great job. Um, tell me, uh, Stephen, what you make of that. Because resurrecting the Rwanda plan, you know, a lot of people saying, you know, a huge amount of money spent on this already. Is it actually going to work? Is it a good idea? Is it a good policy? Well, I think if you look at the policy generally, if you want a deterrent and one that was going to be effective, then Rwanda was the only deterrent policy that's been placed on the table from any of the political parties, the current government or the previous Conservative Party. And it did have some small impact. We noticed that there were those who felt that they would be on the Rwanda list were moving to Ireland and causing problems mm -hmm. there. So there was some tangential evidence to suggest it was having some impact. The question about it, though, and why there is a difficulty for James Cleverly in wanting to resurrect it, is his view that although the Supreme Court made the decision, he is not accepting that any part of that Supreme Court's decision-making process involved historical elements of, of, of jurisprudence that came from the European Court of Human Rights. And that's his big failure. Without removing yourself from the European Court of Human Rights, you can't enact legislation which the Supreme Court can't ignore. And so he will have major problems. He's not the only one that's trying to bring this back as well. We, we know that Tom Tugendhat has also talked about it, and so has Robert Jenrick. So I think that's the key policy that brings those three together and distinguishes themselves from the other three candidates. Uh, let's talk about Kemi Badenoch now and her refusal, but a number on things. There's quite a number of uh, politicians, certainly Labour have refused to put a number on the number of uh, uh, migrants, Ill well illegal, they want to be zero, but legal migrants as well. Let's hear what Kemi Badenoch had to say earlier on today. We had a cap of, 10, 000, of tens of thousands uh, when David Cameron came in. We need to ask ourselves, why didn't that work? rather than just saying, we'll make another promise. Something went wrong there. So it's not just about throwing out numbers and throwing out, tar throwing out targets. Something is wrong with the system. So I'm talking about the system. People who are throwing out numbers and saying, oh, well, we'll leave the ECHR and so on, are giving you easy answers. That is how we got in this mess in the first place. I'm not going to do that. So what do you make of what Kemi Birnock said there, Stephen? Well, I, I, I analyse this in two particular ways. One is for somebody who has been in government for such a long period of time and suggests that she understood that there is a problem, there is a vacuousness in not producing any ideas to tackle this so-called problem that she raises when she mentioned that David Cameron said that we wanted to cap at 10,000 a year. Now, I, I published a paper I mean, it's way back in 2017, fair, flexible, forward way, thinking uh, immigration system post-Brexit. And with that, we, we clearly set out steps that could reduce immigration to less than 50,000 a year. And in some cases, like uh, low-skilled immigration, zero. And we tackled in that some of the problems that are inherent in the immigration system. The problem with Kemi Badenoch is that as she swung her political alliance to more of that of the One Nation in hope of swinging their votes behind her, she's not saying absolutely anything other than the system's wrong. Well, we know the system's got faults, but she's not putting forward any positive solutions. In fact, anyone who's got solutions like Rwanda, the ECHR, she's poo-pooing as simplistic ideas, but they are fundamental, fundamental to actually understanding how this system works. Okay, Stephen, thank you. I appreciate that. That's Stephen Wolfe there, he's a migration expert, former MEP.